scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Elisha worked with Elijah for a very long time. He would have been, I mean, um, um, Gehazi. He would have been prophet Gehazi. But you can see his motive. One time Naaman came and when Naaman was healed, Elisha told him to just go and carry all his goodies and go. And Naaman, like Judas, you see it now. Naaman said, we can't let this thing just go like that. And he ran after him and said, wait, my master just changed his mind. Can you offload some of these things? I will handle it. And when he came back, he just kept quiet like nothing happened. And Elisha looked at him and said, was my spirit not with you? sometimes members in church are really foolish if a man is really anointed and he can stand on stage and see what is happening in the lives of people what makes you believe he cannot discern your motive are we together when i talk to pastors and i counsel them and they bring me problems maybe them assistants um, other people around are fighting i look at them and i say come on now are you not anointed? Where did you keep the anointing? Do you drop it just at the altar? Can you not discern? Everyone say motive. Say it again, motive. Your motive and your motivation. Sincerity is what is lacking in the body of Christ. Sincerity. Sincerity of motif is the reason why we have not seen the power of God in our lives. Sincerity of motif. Our motifs are perverted. Our motifs are corrupted. I once met a pastor who told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one. When he told me he had met Benny Hinn one on one, I looked at his life and tears wanted to come out of my eyes. He thought it was a testimony. I said, I can't understand. What are you saying? He said, Truly, he was in a program. He happened to be like a PA or some not pa but you know those who and see please if you are close to a man of god go back and start examining because proximity is not equal to connectivity you can be the closer you are to a man of god the farther away your chances of truly receiving the anointing because familiarity can step in are we together now Muti. I never get too familiar with the Holy Spirit. I love him. The Holy Spirit has revealed himself in uncommon dimensions to me. But at every point, I make sure that that sense of honor, that my motif is always aright. When I'm praying for a meeting, oh Lord, I thank you for your power and your glory in this meeting. He sees my heart. 
and he knows that I'm not trying to look for a name. I'm not trying to look for fame. Are we together? When was the last time, listen, and I'm talking to all of us, especially for those who are pastors, when was the last time your motif was aright? You see why David was called a man after God's heart? David would say, search my heart. Not search my throne. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. Because my heart can be deceitful. So many people have missed out on the will of God. That's the reason why you find out that in many churches, after a while, people start fighting for the position that is most lucrative. When you call somebody and say, promise, go and work in welfare. Ken, work in prayer department. Maman, work in ushery. Maman says, ushery. It's me now that you are giving ushery. This guy is in prayer department. At least the honorarium, there's a possibility of honorarium coming. Welfare, there's no possibility of any honorarium coming. Are we together? Have you seen people lobby for positions in church? You've seen that happen? This is the reason. They find, you know how a funnel is. When you pour water, the funnel moves in a direction. And so they discern where the money or the honor is flowing. And they leech themselves around that place. And God sees their hearts. Says your motif is corrupted. I like you to in a very sincere way. Listen. Cry out and ask the Lord to search your motif for desiring his presence. For desiring the anointing for desiring crowd for desiring revelation for desiring fame you want miracle power is up for grabs but the question is what is your motivation are we together very important come and make my heart your home Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. Come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i know yeah search me through and through till my heart becomes when was the last time you listen to a man of God, his prayer content, and you had him praying and crying for the sheep. Oh God, bless these people. Oh God, increase them. If it means that you don't lift me and you lift them, go ahead, oh God. Sincere motive. Sincere desire. Oh God, I'm a shepherd. They can die, but let me live. That's the prayer of many people. That's the attitude of many people. I pray for you. May God touch your motif and bring you to a point where you are very sincere. Many people watch Johnson Suleiman and watch all the prophets who move in very uncommon levels of the revelatory dimensions of prophecy and you see the desire you see the desire you i mean you see the hunger every time they say a man of god is coming to town you see so many people they go and sit in front you would think they want the anointing for a clean motive sincerity that's what i shared with the pastors I told them many of you are not sincere it shows it shows in your discussions it shows in your your secret lives that you really do not love the sheep 
it shows that you don't care about them every time i come in for koinonia and i see crowds of people and i see people standing if i see just one person standing i can feel it in my heart sometimes i'm almost quarreling the protocol department and they say look we are doing our best there is only so much we can do i i feel as though i should stand and let the people i i just would not interrupt the work of the various departments but i see it especially when we are done and i see people leaving and while we are going and i see some people trekking in groups happily through the night my heart is moved listen compassion is a big key to working in the anointing compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people is the secret to the anointing are we together if sam is sick right now and i come to sam and i lay hands on sam and sam is not healed i lay hands on sam and sam is not healed i will carry sam by myself to shika because i am so interested in his healing my ego notwithstanding but a pastor who is more concerned about his ego would rather leave Sam to die. Are we together? So that it will be through his hand. How many pastors have quarreled members for receiving miracles in other places aside from their church? Are we together? How many people will dare not give a testimony about what God used another man of God to do in their life? before the overseer he says so you are trying to say i'm not anointed now honor your man of god respect him don't come and cause trouble between pastors but at the same time any man who is desperate for change in people will celebrate that change even if it does not come through him because the most important thing is that the people have received many of the testimonies we give in our churches were not carried out by the hands of many of the pastors that's the truth about it but it's just that the people know if they testify and say the whole truth the pastor will note in fact it's not even the pastor there is already a system to punish disloyalty are we together motif motif and some of us in our little groups and fellowships is already happening to us right now the moment somebody comes and says wow god bless me with this revelation and it did not come from you all of a sudden you start looking and say oh i wish sure is correct let me see it motive if what you want is celebration and being a celebrity if that is your prayer if you just want celebrity please go and act for him if you want the anointing if you want to serve god genuinely your heart must first be to him and to the sheep of his pasture i worship you great i am you are mighty in this place I worship you, King of Kings. You are the strong and breasted one. I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. I lift my hands. As I see praises to your name. Listen. You must love God and align your motive. I say it again. Align your motive for desiring the gifts of the Spirit. Align your motive for desiring power. You want access to revelation. Align your motive. align your motive motive is the core behind the dispensing of graces unto people
what is the state of your heart i know you are well-meaning but what is the state of your heart sister it's not like god cannot give you a great man of god to marry but what is the motive behind your heart if the motive of your heart is to serve god and to stand by that man to be a blessing to partner with him to lift up the banner of christ in the nations i guarantee you god will not withhold it from you but if your motivation is that you just sit down and just smile around and look like you are more than other ladies and so Ankara and all of this you will never let me just tell you you don't even have to pray about it I'll help you answer the prayer now it will never happen that way because God is not a fool I want you to know that kingdom advancement is a serious business to God he gave the blood of his very son for it and so anyone playing games with the anointing closely related to this i want to share with all of us a big secret before we go to point two. i began to pray recently and i was asking the lord why many miracles that happen to people in the body of christ don't last and the lord showed me something that scared me i want to share with you this everybody say money shout it say mammon the Lord taught me a mystery that I want all of us. Please open your eyes and let me teach you something. Watch this. If I'm holding money, so I have your attention now. Come, sir. Watch this. If Michael is sick or in need of breakthrough or he's trusting God to wipe his tears in any area, are we together now? and then he comes to meet me as a man of god and i tell him michael give me one thousand naira and i will pray for you and i will sow a seed i guarantee you in the name of the lord jesus you just cancel that spiritual transaction anointing will never has never been an instrument in exchange for money are we together now i can bless him listen let me tell you why many people especially many young pastors and young prophets are from their their lives look like they are fake some of them are not fake the truth is that they are violating this law because you never buy the power of god no sir it's god speaking to us i can bless him and he decides to sow a seed into my life he can use the money and buy a tape or buy a book a pastor can challenge people in the church to sow seeds for a project that's all right but where the money is in direct demand so that you will supply anointing is called witchcraft if you are doing it here stop it now let me tell you now stop it not later now stop it between you and god let it never happen you will never see the power of god that way remember in the book of acts the gentleman who wanted to buy power from peter and he said your money perish with you pastors have reduced themselves and reduced the potency of the anointing of the spirit i know we need money ministries need money don't get me wrong i know i know that pastors need money they have families but not to compromise with the anointing the anointing will bring you money big time people will surprise you but it's not going to be this way are we together all those things where you carry offering basket and as i heal you you drop your own whether you call it free will or whatever if it came in demand for the anointing brothers and sisters if you ever saw result it was the mercy of god not a justification of what happened this is one thing that i've seen that is eating people in the church you do not use the anointing for merchandise no you will be blessed you will be changed look let me tell you 
bless people and allow them to decide to honor you, they will surprise you. How much can I charge you for a breakthrough? How much can I charge you for miracles? Let's assume that you receive a breakthrough and then you, I ask you to pay me 10,000, 20,000. Let's even assume that I ask you to pay me 50,000 and you bring it. I have received wages, not favor, wages. But by the time I bless you and I leave you to the God that sent me, he himself will move you and you will come with one million naira, ten times what I would have demanded and you will bless me. It's impossible to be a true servant of God and bless people without God moving them to bless you. It's no, it never happens. If nobody is blessing you, it's because your anointing is not notable enough. Are we together? This is one of the reasons why many people are rushing into ministry. Because it seems like it's working. Someone gets into ministry and in four months, he has ten jeeps. He raised offering for himself. And ten people gave, and there are rich people. You see, people are desperate. So whatever I said, I beg, please take the jeep and heal me. I'm tired of all this trouble. But God is watching. And you find out that they rise and never get to certain levels. And God says, I can't take you international with this attitude. You will misrepresent me. Your motive is corrupted. There have been times when people have sown seeds in this ministry. Especially seeds of kinds. And when they bring it, because I never use them. But I just bless them and we release it. Sometimes we give it to people. Sometimes we honor the workers with it. I look at it when I see maybe especially gadgets or some things and I find out that it's very expensive and we get to find out that the owner most probably is a student or whatever I'm even moved and I say ah this is a student probably the parents bought this for him we appreciate the sincerity but I have not once not twice I've asked the protocol department look for the owner of this and bring and I pray for the person bless the person and give the person the gift back for many of us, your hand is in a mode to collect consistently. It doesn't matter how it comes. No. That's not the way God blesses people in the kingdom. Is God helping us to examine motives? Motives. How many pastors have trouble rich men in their church? visitations every day you would think the visitation is because of brotherly love what sort of brotherly love you pass 12 members who are your members but because you know that you will take kunu or zobo or or maybe um whatever it is they just find something or cold water that is not honoring enough and then you go and keep inconveniencing some other people and tell them look uh i came with a word this word is very strategic let me see a seed I need a seed to, to provoke the anointing. The anointing is provoked, yes. But it's provoked out of revelation, not demand. Are we together now? It is true that you can bring a seed to a man of God. When Isaac was going to bless his sons, he said, make me venison. This was talking to, it was a fatherly blessing. It's not just that he was saying, come and buy my anointing with venison. He was saying, honor me with it. I've taught you the law of honor. But this thing of demanding money for power. Anytime, listen, it's not even every giving that is worth collecting. When you discern that that giving is like selling your birthright, you honorably decline. There are people who give you in such a way that the day you, as you collect it, you throw away your honor. Preserve the, how much is 10 naira, how much is 20 naira, tea and bread, and you lose everything because of it. Praise the Lord. Don't get into that attitude of wanting to buy anointing. I hate the way we talk about money all the time in church. It, it can, I mean, have you seen men of God who preach a very solid message? Solid message. And when the spirit of the people are lifted, it, it just now coins, it say in conclusion, there's a story and uh, immediately the people start getting uncomfortable because they know where he's going to. 
Say, I can't end this, this meeting without you hearing this story. Because this story would demand a, a response. There was a man, and then so on and so forth. And they tell you all the story. And at the end of it, the man now says, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of that. And um, you, I'm going to bless you. Stand here with 5,000. Not if God is leading you or if you are led to sow 10,000. You, you are a rich man. You can't bring 5,000 for me. Stand here with 10,000. And the moment you start doing that, you may not be fake, but you are driving the, the, the fire of God from your life. And if you don't take time, it will become Ichabod, the departure of the glory. That's why certain men of God, eventually you find out that the grace of God just diminishes in their life. You would think they did not visit the Baba they used to visit. It's not Baba anything. It's just scriptural principles that they have violated. Say in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to be sincere and to be true. I open up my heart and I ask the Spirit of the Lord to examine my motive. How many people pray for hours because they are trying to intimidate others? They are tired though, but because they saw another colleague, they fire on. On a very good day, they would have rested if the person is not there. I've seen people who pray and they are sleeping. Once they hear the door, they just stop. To mean you should come and see me in the... Look, 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 look. Don't play games with the anointing. You must be true if you want the power of God. Number two. You want to carry the glory of God upon your life. Your level of passion and hunger for God. Your level of passion and hunger. There's a song in my spirit. She's your mentor now. Come and sing it if you know. Spirit lead me where my truth. Let me walk upon the waters. You know the song? That's the song that is in my spirit. Sing it to him. In the presence of my Savior, Spirit lead me where my in our borders, let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger. Sing it one more time with all your heart. Where my trust for you is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Your level of passion and hunger. Brothers and sisters, seeking God is a full-time pursuit. There's nothing like part-time seeking God. Are we together? No, you don't seek God part-time. You don't seek God with your spare time, sorry. You don't seek God with the remaining time you have. After you make money, after you marry, after you give birth to children, the balance of it, you now say, oh yeah, God, take. No, no, no. The jealousy of God fights anything that is above him. Even if it's what he gave you, he will still fight it. Listen, God can give you a thing 
that he will still fight it tomorrow the moment it rises above him his jealousy begins to fight it immediately when the bible says god is a jealous god take that word very seriously your passion psalm 42 verse 2 listen pursuit is the proof of passion pursuit is the proof of passion every time you have passion towards anything you will seek it and pursue it unsupervised unsupervised do you know why the christianity of many believers is cold and lukewarm let me tell you the truth they do not have passion for god my soul thirsted for god for the living god when shall i come and appear before god this is the psalmist a psalm communicating passion are we together if this is my wife if this is my wife watch this and i travel for two days if i'm not a foolish and a stupid man what should happen to me while i'm away if i really love her and i'm passionate i should miss her Abby. when i'm about coming what should happen when i see her will i just pass and say how are you i'm back you know there's something wrong immediately are we together when relationship and fellowship is in place i should run and give her a big hug and say sweetheart i missed you how are you just me what has happened passion if a call is coming i ignore the call because i'm trying to communicate passion if you must be prompted to love god and to seek god it's because you are not passionate enough anything you are passionate about you have time for it my brother that's why this night after koinonia as late as it is you are still going to escort the lady to her room the reason is because you have passion are we together there are brothers after koinonia right now they will even enter bus there is a fire they themselves cannot explain they say let's go what is boss is it will kill the time we have for our discussion and the lady stands brothers and sisters from here to north gate will look like five minutes and they say we're even here that's passion but let let me tell you to escort somebody you don't have I mean, a man let me ask you to escort your colleague by the time you get to that shop you say are you biking or we are walking because you love the person jesus brotherly love but there is no passion that fire is not there have you seen a lady 12 30 the guy is shaking and he says let me try flashing her he flashes once and she pity say i'm sorry let me start by apologizing say for what say I, you, you sound sleepy say i was just stretching but the truth is she was sleeping everybody say passion say fire that's the name of that experience if you don't have that thing listen listen if as you're sitting down right now this is not your feeling for god you need a retreat i'm telling you the truth it's a sign don't wait until you see any demon or anybody chasing you in a dream you need a retreat very quickly fire that's what it takes there must be an obsession that's the word really if you are not yet obsessed about god forget about his power in your life it must be an obsession and by the way let me digress to help you test whether you are ready for marriage with the same feeling if you love the man and the woman in a lesser sphere careless easily replaceable attitude please seek counsel because you are about to get into trouble are we together it takes passion and fire to give excuses have you seen people who have passion for anything they give excuses watch how people act and treat football man you is about to play match 3 30 by two o'clock the person is there with singlet already arguing are we together arguing one hour before the time and then they sit down in the place of argument and they say if you did not start watching football from 1993 don't join us because you don't even know what it we need somebody with a historical perspective and they're arguing and the person is mentioned 
is called passion. The moment the match starts, the person is in front. Sweating but remaining there. Thirsty but remaining there. Are we together? A point comes, there are guys, there are ladies who will still remove his shirt and say, I'm not going out. This sweat, we will die here with this sweat. I must watch this match. It's called passion. Now come to the house of God and see the coldness. The coldness. The coldness. When an average believer tries to show that I'm a little serious with God, we just say, Pastor, are we together? Or oh, Mama, it's a shame. Bless you. It's a big shame that we even resent people for being passionate about God. Until your love for God makes someone around you uncomfortable, you don't love God enough yet. That someone can look at you and say, Kai, oh, well, carry your madness and leave my presence. Every champion is a fanatic of whatever he's excelling in. Are we together? Less as fair, lukewarm attitude in everything is even why people fail generally in life. There is nothing in life that is worth their unflinching pursuit. I'm chasing after you no matter what. You know the song? I will keep bringing songs that I in my spirit. I don't know the song so much, but if you can help me, any one of you, if you don't know it. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do. Cause I need you more and more. More and more. More and more. More. And more. more and To what degree do you seek him? Let me tell you something. God has become my obsession. When I say an obsession, I don't know what he has done to me, but I pray he will do it to you. Believe me. Believe me. It's an obsession. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. It's an obsession. You must get to that point. Before you want a man's anointing, you must meet the standard of his level of hunger for God. No, anointing does not just flow carelessly. Don't you think because you are touching some? No! Bishop Oyedeko said the secret of um, the hand of God upon his life is his heart beat for God. More and more 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 Psalm 69 verse 9 let me show you something very powerful there is a term I've seen in the Bible but I've hardly studied it hardly studied it but I studied it recently and I was amazed Everyone read Psalm 69 verse 9. One to read. For the zeal of thine house had eaten me up. And the reproaches of them that reproach you have come upon me. Listen, let me explain to you what this means. The zeal of the house of God has so eaten me to an extent I have become the same way they reproach God. They have transferred their resentment towards God to me because I have sought God so much I am the closest expression to him that they can see. So the anger they have for him, they have transferred it for me. That's how much I love him. Hallelujah. Are we together? It says the zeal. This was a prophecy about Jesus Christ. The zeal of thy house has consumed the zeal of thy house that a man can be so consumed with the things of God it has nothing to do with whether you are called into the ministry or not zeal the 
zeal of the Lord's house makes you pursue him ruggedly. Listen, listen. When was the last time you woke up in the night and you could not sleep again? Because you are thinking about the kingdom. You are thinking about his majesty. Something about him. Now you have me and I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. Now I surrender. My life is not mine. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. You are the first, the last, beginning and the end. In you I live and have my being. There is absolutely nothing you can do. Absolutely nothing compares to you. I don't know the other part, but you are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Sing it to him from your heart. He is everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Until you love God more than money. Until you love him more than wife, more than husband, more than academics, more than job, more than promotion, more than children, you are not entitled to the glory of God upon your life. The zeal in John chapter 2 from verse 17, when they saw the way Jesus was walking and the way he was doing the things in the ministry and flogging people out of the temple, they remembered that the zeal of the Lord, zeal is like an anointing. It will drive you into places you never dreamt you will go. Zeal. The same way you see a brother standing in the rain and rain is beating him and he says, sorry, why are you here? He says, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for grace. He says, is it compulsory? It's late. He says, please, if you will not support my agenda, leave this place. Because the rain is nothing. Say, what is rain? Am I sick? It's called zeal. If you do not have that for the house of God, you don't love him. If coming for koinonia does not drive you, do you know, every Friday is like a wedding day for me. I literally, as I sit down here, many of you would have noticed, I get blessed by the worship team, but I can't wait for them to finish their rendition for me to jump up and come. It's called zeal. I've been doing this for years. If I were pretending it, you would know it by now. There are times that I come directly from a meeting to Koinonia, but the passion and the fire is there. Food or no food. I pray for you that the zeal of the Lord will eat you up. That it will consume you that it will make you passionate so that when you get a job you will not leave him are we together so that when you marry you will not leave him so that when you no longer have prayer points do you know it is possible god will solve your problem there is no personal prayer point what then will you do when he solved everything the reason why many people are drawing after him i'm telling you this sincerely is because of the load of problems they have If God solves all your problems, will you still seek him? If, there, if you're coming for miracle service, it's just to bring the prayer request of others. Will you still love him? I can understand why you love him because you need him for your defense next week. You need him for graduation. 
you are trusting you will manipulate the result in a way that you will live and be in peace so i can understand your zeal but what happens listen you always know those who never had zeal for god by their commitment after god meets their needs not before he meets it after when a lady is looking for a husband desperately i can understand why you are around for night vigil but what if a husband comes and a rich one and then one month after your marriage you are pregnant every testimony you want has been given and to hell with god until another problem comes shade is here with her kids raising them she's been like this for many years in this ministry way before marriage raising her kids her son is very interesting he can mimic me almost verbatim this boy you are saying take it or this and that and in his own little way but he's growing some of us it took the grace of god to drag you back to the house of god the money you got before has finished so you came you you came in the name of thanksgiving but the truth is you are only thanking god because you are aware that in the next two weeks whether you thank him or not there's going to be a problem and so you have come to the house of god I love him whether he answers my prayer or not I love him whether he ever anoints me or not koinonia is too small a reason for me to love God the results in my life are too small a reason fall in love with him to that extent I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you again and again i keep falling in love with you i keep falling in love with you i keep falling in love with you again and again i keep falling in love with you i keep falling in love with you Falling in love with you again and again. Falling in love with you. Falling in love with you. Falling in love with you again and again. Psalm 63, verse 1 and 3. Fall in love with him and you will see his power in your life in remarkable ways. Fall in love with him genuinely beyond the need for things. Give me tea, give me bread. Fall in love with him genuinely and I'm telling you, you will see God answer your thoughts before they become prayer points. Psalm 63 Oh God Thou art my God not our God my God Eli Eli I'm so passionate about you when I wake up you are my obsession and so I seek you early my soul thirst for thee my body my flesh longs after you do you know lost is a corruption of passion that should have been directed towards God. Lost. Lost. What you call lost. Immorality. Lost is misdirected and corrupted passion that would have been channeled appropriately to the rightful owner. But because the person is standing where God is, so you direct that passion towards the person. It says, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Oh God, you are my God. I seek you early. I don't give you the remaining of my time. I don't give you the remaining of my time. When I do what I think is important in my life, then I carry the balance of the time and bribe God with it. 
and say, okay, Lord, please, so that I, you, don't, you save me from the guilt of feeling like I'm not seeking you. Most times when I go back after koinonia, after everyone is done and I've eaten, I go down my knees and sometimes I cannot even sleep again. I just sit down and I begin to meditate on his faithfulness. And sometimes I can just begin to play worship songs and his presence, his presence, his literal Shekinah will fill that room. Fill that room. There is a secret. There is a secret. Do you love him or do you want to use him? God does not want an affair. He wants a relationship. I've told you. God does not want an affair with you. You can have an affair with a prostitute. You can have an affair with your wife. You have a relationship with your wife. An ongoing, continual relationship. But you can meet a prostitute for one night and never see her. Not even know how her face looks like. God does not want an affair. Many of us are giving him an affair. I tell you the truth. Tonight, God is calling us to the place of power. Calling us to the place of power. Number three, the third key to carrying the glory of God. Can we just pray in one minute? I just feel that we should just, just pray in tongues just for one minute. Just to open up our spirits so that we don't trivialize this that we are praying. talk about the third point but the Holy Spirit is stopping me because these points that I've said enough God wants to do something in our midst this thing has pleased the Lord this thing I have taught I know when the Lord is pleased over something would you just pray and just pray in the spirit this is well pleasing to the Lord tonight it's an incense of worship it's a call for us to return back to that place. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul to the song of all songs? Would you dance with me, oh, oh lover of my soul, yeah, to the song of all songs? Would you dance with me, oh, lover? To the sound of all songs, would you dance with me? You're the lover of my soul. To the sound of all songs, just the voices. Would you dance with me, oh, lover of my soul, to the song of all songs? Oh, he can make your ministry powerful, I tell you. Would you dance with me, oh, lover?
secret of my life I love him and I pursue him I seek him as a job I seek his presence as a full time assignment let me tell you the secret of power beyond your fasting and your prayer have a genuine motive no matter how wrong you are let your motive be true no matter what you don't know let your motive be true your motive is greater than your actions your motives are stronger than your actions and then seek him seek him you will see more miracles in your life by the act of his love listen 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 if these two kids are my children by the time i'm done you may not have the kind of access you want to see me. Is that true? Because you are coming to Apostle Joshua Selman. But if these are my children, they have no business with Apostle. All they know is Father. Are we together? They can watch you join a queue and just run. You see how our children come after Koinonia here. They don't come and join any line. They just pass you and rush to come and hug me. They are coming to hug their father. They have no business with whether whatever to them is not apostle to them is someone they love take away the unnecessary religion and the unnecessary formality come into that inner chamber of the spirit where only lovers come past the place where prayer warriors stop past the place where fasting giants stop past the place where word carriers stop and enter the inner chamber is a place where only lovers enter even prayer warriors don't enter that chamber even fasting giants don't enter the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard and it does not occur in the heart of any man what god has in store for them that love him them that are obsessed listen you will be sleeping in the night and his majesty will come and wake you and open you up to mysteries while someone else is fasting god takes his prayer point and gives you as a token of his love listen in 2000 and i think was it six now or so i had a vision and when i had a vision that was the first time that I saw a manifestation of the angel that walks with me. He's called the angel of the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. I have seen three of these beings. There is one, the name is Zion's help. That's the name of the angel. The helper of Zion. These are the angels that bring breakthrough. These are the angels that bring results. I, God is my witness. I cannot remember fasting and praying to say open my eyes give me prophetic oh i'm just madly in love with him lord i don't know what you have done to me but i'm in love with you and god says i see your obsession and he says let me test that love what is it that you cannot give me and i say lord the stage is yours carry it whatever you think in my life is standing your place take it and god says truly i see the proof of love is that there is no there is no hiding anything are we together the apex of love between a husband and wife is intimacy being naked and unashamed are we together if you do not get to that point where you can be open to god and naked and unashamed there is deceit somewhere in your relationship if i'm going out with you and i password some messages in my phone and I'm afraid of you accessing it. Listen, confusion is a sign that a deceiver is present. Are we together? Genuine passion. We are going to pray. God is going to visit us very briefly. 
but we are going to pray to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you it is it must wait lord give me you relationship can wait jobs can wait anointing can wait give me you strange impartation in this place. This is why the Lord stopped me. And listen, aside from several activations that will happen, one of the major impartation that will happen in this place is the anointing to fall in love with God in strange ways. Listen, listen, many of you, what will happen to you tonight, it will become as if you have become a madman something will come upon you something will come upon you in dramatic dimensions proportions that you have never seen it's a dimension of love I keep falling in love with you I keep falling in love with you falling in love with you again and again I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. Again and again. I keep falling in love with you. I keep falling in love with you. Falling in love with you. One more time. Yeah, I keep falling in love with you. More than ministry. More than the desire for power. More than the desire for fame and greatness. Lift your hands. I tell you, something mighty will happen to you. The zeal of the Lord. 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 Ta, 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 ta. The zeal of the Lord will consume you. It will eat you up like a cancer. As I begin to sing, it will be like an impartation. From my left to my right, I 
and outside is like an initiation to a realm of love and I, I, I'm desperate for you go ahead oh great one and bring your seal upon people and I, I pray let a strange anointing fall upon your people at the count of three there will be mighty impartation love for God it will come heavy upon you one two three take it now take it now take it right now right now right now right now right now everywhere in this place take it right now fire is a fire and a seal for God is a fire and a seal for God a fire a passion for the house of God a passion for the things of God Just a few minutes there's an impartation happening to you your love for God must be real it must be genuine it must be genuine it must be genuine ask him to give you a baptism of love for him love for his house Lord, let there be an awakening in the hearts of your people. Cry for the zeal of the Lord to come upon you. ask him Lord let your zeal consume me let your zeal consume me let your zeal consume me
your hands. Lift your hands. I hear my spirit visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. A mantle for visions and dreams. Prophetic encounters that will take you to the secret place. Lord, right now, where are those people? Let that mantle fall upon them. Visions and dreams. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Visions and dreams. You will hear his voice in the night. Visions and dreams. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing my spirit spiritual accuracy. Spiritual accuracy. Especially for people in ministry. Please lift your hands. Something mighty will happen. God is about to end confusion in lives and mysteries. There is a mystery of spiritual accuracy. My God, I pray right now. Like a mantle. Like an anointing. That gives precision. As many people. Who are supposed to walk in this. Wherever they are. In the name of Jesus. Visit them right now. 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 Zion's King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 When your motif is right and true and when you seek him with your all like the deer pants after the water brook, unashamedly unembarrassingly then the stage is clear for you to cast true fire then the stage is clear for you to carry a mantle that no man can deny I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want those who came visiting to come out. I want to minister to them. Those who came visiting, specifically from maybe other places, pastors and all of that. 
I usually don't do this. I want you to stand with your heart hungry and desperate. Hungry and genuinely desperate to go back with an encounter. Carry something heavy, believe me. You will carry a strange order of grace. Help them. You will carry something mighty that you will take back to your regions. Strange levels of fire and anointing. Deep fountains of encounters. Stretch your hands towards them as I lay my hands on them. Father, let something come upon our visitors in the name of Jesus Christ. As I lay my hands on you, something mighty comes upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Take it and go with it. Take it and go with it. this gentleman for me. Lift your hands. Not just the healing anointing but the teaching anointing. I release it upon you right now. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A strange fire for revelation. There is one of the ladies that I ministered to here. Um, there is a strong prophetic anointing that is coming upon her. The Lord will identify her by herself just among you people standing here. The power of God will come upon that person is a, in a mighty way. It's one of the ladies here. It's a strong prophetic unction. I don't know exactly who that person is, but I will minister to you. Lord, identify the lady, whoever that lady is. Let this strong prophetic unction come upon such a one. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is deliverance happening to two people, two people in the congregation. I cast that devil in the name of Jesus. I see deliverance happening to two people. I cast that spirit of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast that spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. I release all of you to go and do mighty things. You came all the way. You will go back. 
like Saul went back when he encountered Samuel. Many of you will go back and step into strange levels of grace. Strange dimensions of the hand of God. All the people God has put under your care and under your watch. Go back and raise them to become mighty men. Go and reproduce the experience you see in this ministry. In your various groups and churches and fellowships. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Those who can go, can go back. Those under the anointing, you just leave them. Hallelujah. There are people here who have not given their lives to Jesus Christ. You were probably invited. You are here to make up your mind for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've just been interrupted by the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord standing in this row. I don't know what it is about this row, but it looks like there are a few people God is touching in this row. This row, I see the Lord touching people right in this area, right down to the back I'm not not just in front here Lord I don't know who you are touching but I stretch my hands and I direct the anointing to whoever should receive that touch all through this row right now in the name of Jesus Christ let no one oh God escape this touch of God right to the back right to the back whoever should receive that touch in the name of Jesus Christ Lord they receive that touch supernatural touch supernatural touch supernatural touch right to the back right to the back in the name that is above all names now you are here just keep praying in tongues as you people are standing close to her don't worry about the reaction she's a very nice lady it's a demonic spirit this is god is working deliverance in her. there are people here who have not made up their minds they've not given their hearts to Jesus Christ wherever you are the greatest decision is to surrender to Jesus there are others who at one time have given their hearts to the Lord but the truth is things happen in your life and you went back as I sing the song my one desire is that you be praised please wherever you are those who are returning and those who are making that decision I know that there are a number of you outside please do not reject his voice in the day that you hear him he calls you for your good hallelujah right now begin to make your way to the front let's celebrate them as they come don't wait for anybody god bless you as you come god bless you as you come i'm making my ways right with jesus god bless you god bless you don't wait for anyone god bless you as you come god bless you as you come there are still people coming outside god bless you the devil is a liar he will not stop you tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Come. Come. Koinonia, keep celebrating them. We welcome you to the kingdom. It doesn't matter how you have lived your life. It doesn't matter what you have done. Jesus calls you tonight. Jesus calls you tonight. He can give you a new beginning. He can change your life. He can give you a new beginning. You can start afresh again keep coming God bless you celebrate them as they come there are still people coming from outside God bless you God bless you don't let your friends stop you don't let anyone stop you hallelujah I congratulate all of you for coming to make this decision for Jesus everyone at one point made this genuine decision realize that you are not just reciting a poem this is a true decision. I don't care how it has been before now. I want you to know that he can give your life a new beginning. Some of you are rededicating your lives. Some of you are coming for the first time and you're saying, Lord, it's all over. I'm, I'm tired of living my life my way. Listen, let me tell you, as you pray this prayer from the depth of your heart, the power of sin will be broken over your life. Lift your right hand genuinely and passionately to the God of your salvation. Please. Don't just say it because you are emotional. Let it be true. Some of you, as you are praying it, you will literally feel something leaving you. The power of sin. Say after me, Lord Jesus, 
Say it again, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. And I come before you this night with all my heart. I surrender. I accept Jesus into my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. And I declare that the power of sin is broken over my life. I declare in the name of Jesus that eternal life comes into my spirit. From today, I am saved. I'm a new person in the name of Jesus. Now keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Something will happen to you as I pray for you. I break the power of sin over your life. I break every habit and every challenge from the pit of hell that attempts to destroy you. I command that devil to live your life and never return. In the name of Jesus Christ, beginning from today is a new story for you. You keep rising from glory to glory. I, I kill away from your life any appetite for ungodliness. And I pray that you will find a new love and a new passion for God. We declare you born again. We declare you saved in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and thank you for this noble decision. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. They'll welcome you on our behalf and they'll give you some details. We'll follow you up. Thank you. God bless you. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us